there are many models and definitions of clinical reasoning. The intent of this video series is to introduce students and novice occupational therapy professionals to the current views of professional and clinical reasoning. The videos are meant to stimulate follow-up questioning in order to dig deeper into the understanding of the concepts presented. We will be using modified and expanded definitions related to the aspects or modes of clinical and professional reasoning, as provided by Shell and Shell from 2008 and Unsworth from 2011. Professions may differ in the way that they critically think to solve problems, usually related to their roles and or functions within their professions. For instance, occupational therapy professionals apply critical thinking differently than occupational therapy students. Students tend to think linearly and use algorithmic thinking approaches. They know that if they follow the rubrics provided to them and they utilize the required formats for written assignments, that they can expect a specific grade. Although algorithmic thinking is used in practice, professionals utilize a great deal of nonlinear heuristic strategies due to the extreme variability of the client and the therapist experiences. This may, in some part, help explain some of the difficulty that students have in transitioning from class to clinic. So why is it important to study the thinking and reasoning of occupational therapy professionals? Well, it promotes the recognition and development of the transition from novice toward mastery and practice through coherent decision making. It also prepares the profession to better develop professional leaders, managers, mentors, and clinical instructors. It enables professionals to better understand and utilize best evidence, as well as to allow them to maintain their intuitive processes to stimulate innovation. When reflected on, professional reasoning can help bring to light potential biases in our own professional decision making. So what's the difference between professional reasoning and clinical reasoning? Well, as we progress through this video series on clinical reasoning, it'll be important to note that although there has been a lot of research on how humans critically think and reason, there hasn't been a great deal of evidence produced in the therapeutic health professions on how we think and reason when working with our complex and varied clientele. With those that have looked at this area, there exist differences in taxonomy, definition, and relationship. In this video, I'll attempt to merge the differences in a superficial level so that you as students or novice pr practitioners can discuss the concepts in more depth during class or with other professionals. Professional reasoning is an overarching concept of logical thought uh, that is used to guide professional practice and action. This includes the utilization of the aspects or modes of reasoning that you see on the screen uh, this includes narrative, scientific, diagnostic, ethical, pragmatic, generalization, procedural, interactive, conditional um, types of reasoning. Uh, these aspects of reasoning will be discussed uh, more in depth in subsequent videos in this series. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the differences in reasoning of a profession are typically related to a specific role or function in that profession. For example, during annual reviews, a supervisor may use each of the aspects of reasoning, uh, including something like scientific reasoning with statistics and productivity to procedural, interactional, and conditional reasoning to complete the review and set goals for the next year. For a therapist in the role and context of uh, an advocacy chair at a state association, the state legislators, third-party payers, and other professional organizations are their clientele. When dealing with the legislators, a professional may use all the aspects of reasoning described, but they would be tailored to the context of specific uh, clientele being advocated to or for. Uh, clinical reasoning is a component of professional reasoning that uh, uses logical thinking to plan, direct, provide, influence, and reflect on patient care. Clinical reasoning is related to the medical model-based reasoning. A practitioner working with a patient recovering from a stroke would use clinical reasoning when working with their patients. A different term entirely may need to be developed for reasoning related to, say, a social-based role, such as working with the homeless or at-risk youth. 
I hope this introduction to professional and clinical reasoning helps you formulate some follow-up questions for deeper discussions in class or with other professionals who have already progressed along the novice to expert maze. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you get a chance, please take time to review both the textbook from Shell and Shell as well as Unsworth's chapter um, in Duncan's text, uh, Foundations for Practice in Occupational Therapy. Thank you.